diamonds? Hmm? What time is it? Over five ounces. Oh, for heaven's sake. Margaret, oh, I thought you were awake. I just figured out the most terrific slogan. As one advertising man to another, you'll love it. I'm sorry I woke you up. Don't talk. Just relax. <laughs> Thanks. I'm all right now. You can go back to sleep. No, I know when I'm licked. Let's hear it. Hear what? The slogan. I knew you were faking. I'm sorry. Well, remember, I've been telling Egghead for a month he's got the wrong slant on the psychology of advertising hats. That's why we haven't landed the Tapple hat account. Clients can sense that sort of thing. Tapple, the hat that defies time. That's terrible, isn't it? Now, I'll tell you why. Your male hat buyer doesn't give a hoot how long a hat's going to last. That's why durability slogans won't sell hats. They're fine to advertise balloon tires or, or pyramids, but not straw hats. Hey, you're not listening. I am, I am, I am. If you'd rather sleep, okay. No, darling, I'm, I'm wide awake. Well, it came to me in my sleep. A Tapple hat is the lightest hat in the world, and I can prove it. I'm dying to hear it. Well, I thought of three slogans to prove it. The first is, a light lid for worried heads. Don't you think it's bad psychology reminding people they're worried? Why don't you say it? Margaret, I love you very much. But these are my slogans. Let's not collaborate. Oh, all right. Number two. If you can't wear a feather in your cap, wear one on your head. That's too pessimistic. I think you should say... Darling, the only thing that'll make me love you more is when you learn to respect my ability. I respect your ability, but you asked for my suggestions. No, I didn't. I don't need any creative help from you. Just your approval. Oh. Because, you see, I think number three is really the one. What's that? Short, dignified, tells the full story. You never know you're wearing one. But other people do. How's that? That's wonderful. You think so? Oh, darling, if that doesn't land the Tapple Hat account, I'm a ringtail baboon, which I'm not, am I, honey? No. No, you know, the psychology is all right. You think the words... Oh, they're perfect. Great exploitation possibilities. Mm -hmm. 
Show Tapwell hats being weighed in every Tapwell show window. Will you have to share the bonus with the sales department? Uh-uh. 5,000 smackers undiluted if Tapwell topples. That's my deal with Egghead. Hey, where are you going? Well, I've got to think. Oh, no, you've thought enough. Let's lie here and dream. How much is a round trip to Bermuda? 300. Mm, that leaves 4,700 for sunburn oil. You haven't changed your mind about Bermuda and our honeymoon, have you? Now, why do you think I've been tying my brains into knots? Bermuda or bust, that's my battle cry. <laughs> Darling. Uh-uh, I got to think. Uh, yes, sir, we have. The Southern Girls sails for Bermuda this coming Friday. Yes, sir. Cabin for two. Oh, the bridal suite. Yes, sir. Name, please. What? William Weldon? Absolutely not. You heard what I said, Mr. Weldon. Absolutely not. N-O. We're not holding any bridal suite for you. Who? It's Weldon again. You don't see why not. He doesn't see why not. Give me that. Mr. Weldon, in the last year, four of our ships have sailed with empty bridal suites. At the last minute, you have canceled your reservations on the Southern Rose, the Southern Bell, the Southern Bow, and the Southern Dream. Now you say you want to sail on the Southern Girl. Well, nothing doing, Mr. Weldon. We've lost enough money on you. From now on, our reservations are strictly COD. Now, wait a minute, Let Admiral. Let me talk to him. Let me talk. I don't suppose you've looked at the Merchant Marine Passenger Code no, of late. You're only going to get him mad and he's going to hang up on you. Listen. Here, please. let me take it. Hello? Hello, this is Mrs. Weldon. Now, don't humor me. Yes, him. yes, of course. After all, we don't have to go to Bermuda No, for no, this is not a gag on Mr. Weldon's part. He's very sincere. Oh, people are very happy. He's been trying to I take recall. me on a honeymoon for over a year. Yes, I even have my trousseau. Well, I assure you, I've been much more disappointed than you have. Now, I'll tell you what you do. You reserve the cabin until 6 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That won't lose you anything. That's right. And I'll be in with bags of gold before 6. All right? Oh, thank you so much. Goodbye. See? You hold it for us until 6. Little Miss Fix-It cooled him off, huh? You're not angry. Well, why should I be angry? We're going on our honeymoon, aren't we? Not if you call me Little Miss Fix-It. Well, that's what you are, aren't you? Why be ashamed of having the finest, noblest character since little Lord Fauntleroy? Why not glory in it? Why not advertise it? Wait a minute, I'll think up a slogan for you. Bill. I'm sorry. I'm afraid it's too late for our honeymoon. The golden moment has passed. It'll never be too late for our honeymoon as long as one of us can hobble around without crutches. He'll save the cab until six tomorrow, huh? Mm-hmm. Bermuda. Palm trees. Guitars. The jungle. And you. You'll never know you're wearing me, but other people will. Oh, if Tapu only comes through. He will. Now, don't clean anything up. We'll have another party tonight to celebrate. Leave everything just as it is. Oh, sure. Oh, it's you. Good morning, Mrs. Weldon. Would you uh, wait right there a moment, please? That man's here again. Who? The idiot. Emil? Mm-hmm. Well, he just happens to be one of the greatest scientists of our time. He's crazy. Well, if you'd only looked at the letter that Edison wrote and congratulated him on... <laughs> Weldon Stables, Busher speaking. <laughs> You're cute. Why, yes, the little filly's right alongside me. <laughs> Who is it? The idiot. Gwendolyn? Good oh. Good guess. Goodbye. I'll phone you with a flash. Bye. Hello? Oh, darling, the most wonderful thing has happened. We're finally going on our honeymoon. Good morning. Good morning, Professor. Yeah, I'm in sort of a hurry. Here, that's all I can spare. It's not very much. Well, I'm sorry. You'll have to cut down on some of the experiments. That's impossible. Well, okay. Here's another five. When can I speak to you? This afternoon, five o'clock in my office. I will bring you a full report. Fine. Well, so long, huh? I got to catch the 812. Uh, Mr. Welder. Good luck. You never know you're wearing one, but other people do. I don't like slogans. But, Mr. Tapple... I have been in the advertising business for 20 years, Mr. Tapple. This is it. I know. It'll sell hats, Mr. Tapple. I know a little about selling hats myself. Granted, that's why you buy this slogan. It doesn't quite sell me. My... Mr. Tapple doesn't like slogans. Look, I'd like to demonstrate something. I'm afraid we've given you all the time we can spare today, eh, Slocum? Mm. Baseball season opens this afternoon. 
See? Now Harker throws out the first ball at 2.15. We'll resume this discussion tomorrow. Yeah, well, Mr. Tapp. And I tell you in advance, gentlemen, no slogan is going to sell me. What we need is some big shot, some celebrity to endorse our hats. That's the only surefire drawing power. People are sheep. You have to lead them. But I'd like to show you this test. It'll only take a minute. What test is that, Mr. Weldon? The blindfold test. The first time it's ever been tried in hat history. Blindfold test? For what? Pardon me, Mr. Slocum. You're the logical candidate. No chance of being prejudiced. That's right. Our slogan says, you never know you're wearing one, doesn't it? Well, now we're going to prove it. Let me in on this. No one can convince me that I can't tell when I've got my own hat on. Okay, we're off. Now, I place the hat on one of you. The one that feels it, speak up. I can feel it. Feel what? The hat. You're not wearing it. It's on Mr. Tapple. It is not. I never before heard of a slogan that was true. You don't know you're wearing one. The Tapple magic hat. That's what we'll call it. Let me try that. My head is unusually sensitive due to some of my hair having fallen out. I have difficulty finding a really comfortable hat. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. My word, I felt absolutely nothing, nothing, Mr. Tapple. I didn't know the hat was that good. Now I feel we need the endorsement angle more than ever. Granted, but what's wrong with having both? Granted. And whom do you see endorsing your hat, Mr. Tapple? Oh, someone big, some great man, someone like, uh, Mayor Harker. Dandy Jim, the perfect endorser. Oh, I don't think Harker will do it. He's refused to endorse any product. He won't refuse this one. Leave it to me, boss. Why, I tell you, Weldon, you won't even get in to see him. I'll see him at the ballpark. Now, nah, all I want you to do, boss, is pull some wires and get me the box next to the mayor's. Can you swing it? Done. And done. Miss Hunter, get me the star ticket agency. Hello, get me Mrs. Weldon, please. Get the star ticket agency. This is Mr. Tapple. It's very important. Get me my publicity department. Mr. Tapple, if I get Mayor Harker's endorsement, do we get the account? Absolutely. Dandy Jim wearing a Tapple hat? It's perfect. Okay. You get that box, boss, and the account's in the bag. I'll get it if I have to buy the Star ticket agency? Hello, Hello listen to the department. Yeah, thank How do you like those bombs? Oh, please. I know he's oh, not there. He's, he's here. here. Swell, huh? Get me, mister. Well, get into your best sarong and meet me at the stadium. By the box office under the L. No, not yet. I'm going to close the deal at the ballpark. Your Honor, let's look at the human angle. Look what a brown derby did for Al Smith. Made a lovable figure of him from coast to coast. Well, this straw hat will do the same for you. Hey, you're acting like a melody. All I want you to do is put it on and let the newsreels photograph you. Hey, hey, Doc. And just one quote. You don't know you're wearing one. Why, you're the best dressed mayor this city ever had. Will you take your hat and scram? Your five minutes are up, Mr. Weldon. But it's a simple human thing to love a hat. Everybody loves a hat. That'll be well, everybody wants to be close. Look, if I just had five more minutes. Young man, I'm here to enjoy a ball game, not endorse an idiotic hat. Goodbye, sir. Mr. I told you there wasn't a chance. He didn't even have an argument either. Just bullheaded, that's all. So not to turn you into an anarchist. I had it all fixed up with the camera boys, too. A moment of silence. Please. What did that announcer say? I didn't get it. What are we standing up for? Shh. Take it off, Mayor. Take what off? Your hat. I've got it off. It doesn't look right. Shut up, will you? Hey, you down there. Take your hat off. Mr. Mayor, look this way. They're yelling at you, Hold Mayor. It. What for? Your hat. Take off that hat. You're mad. Take off that thing. Where'd this come from? What's the idea of wearing your hat during the ceremony? I didn't know I was wearing one. Thank you, Mayor. That's all my husband wanted you to say. Thank you. Mayor booed for wearing hat during ceremony. The mayor says, direct quote, I didn't know I had it on, unquote. Now remember, Mr. Temple, this is just a rough layout of the way the ad will look. It's great, it's wonderful, I like it. Margaret, you have done something that is going down in the annals of advertising. Something that will be an inspiration to every advertising man when things look darkest. Oh, please, J.B., there's no occasion for oratory. <laughs> Modest as always. 
Mrs. Weldon ran my business for me for three years, Mr. Tapple. Never took any credit. Insisted on posing as my secretary. Well, this afternoon I was only carrying out my husband's carefully laid plans. Wasn't I, dear? You snatched the battle right out of the fire, and I'm sure Bill is a big enough man to admit it. Gentlemen, when my wife goes into action, she makes the U.S. Marines look like a still life. <laughs> That's fine. That's the way I like to hear a husband talk. Bill, it was your idea, your slogan. But you rode to the rescue, Margaret. That's right. The most thrilling thing I ever saw a woman do. And here, here is the check for the bonus. Oh, thanks, J.B. Oh, Bill, it's for 5000 well, that's nice of you, J.B. Thanks. I never parted with $5,000 more happily. Oh, Bill, we're going. Yes, dear, we are. <laughs> See you in the morning, boss, and I'll fix up these layouts before we leave. Uh, I'd like to have the little woman in on this, Crookshank. Mr. Tapple, when you buy Crookshank service, you get Mrs. Weldon thrown in automatically. She is our inspiration department. She works behind the scenes. Oh, Bill, come on. Own up. Who figured out that slogan? Well, I don't like to take any credit away from my little genius here, but it came to me in my sleep. I'll bet she whispered it in your ear. <laughs> oh, that's silly. Bill made it all up, everything. He's the best advertising man in the business, J.B., and you know it. <laughs> I'm afraid you can't win that argument today, darling. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye John. Thanks for the bonus, J.B. <laughs> you earned it, Margaret. I'm so excited, I can hardly talk. Let's enjoy it in silence. Then. Bill, you're not angry. What about? The way it turned out. It turned out very well, I thought. Well, I mean the way they talk, that asinine egghead. Honestly, he just made me sick to my stomach. Make it two stomachs. And you're not sore at me, Bill? You're not married to an ungrateful cat, Margaret. I yield to no man in my admiration of you. Of course, you might have let me dig up another pudding-headed celebrity, but that would have been wasting time, two hours at least. No, yours was the better way, darling. And all I can say is that you were superb. You are sore. But only full of awe, darling. There's nothing like being married to a brilliant woman. Bill, don't save it up till we get on the boat. Save what up? The hollering. Our honeymoon's going to be very quiet and efficient. And don't worry about anything going wrong. If it does, you'll straighten it out. It's like being married to the U.S. Marines. Bill, do you love a me? A complex, that's what it is. A U.S. Marines complex. You keep thinking I'm not quite able to handle my own affairs? Well, what about that time in Springfield? Go on, answer that. You'd still be in jail if I hadn't said I was rushing to the hospital to have a baby. I thought it was very bright of me thinking of that pillow. Oh, darling, I'm sorry if I've done wrong. I apologize. I admit, I lost my head. I'm an idiot. You could put all my brains in a thimble and have enough room to cook an egg in it. But I... I... I love you. Kiss me. You're a genius. Shall I pick up the boat tickets now? You wait a minute. I'll go with you. All right. Good afternoon, Mrs. Weldon. Hello there, Professor. How are you, Emil? What's the good word? Mr. Weldon, an emergency has arisen. Uh-oh, sounds expensive. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. But I need more equipment. I must have $148.50. Are you serious? You can't afford anything like that, Professor. Mrs. Weldon, please believe me. Every penny goes into my work. I spent nothing on myself. Amo, we can't afford it. Pardon me, but that is like saying you cannot afford to become rich. Professor, you said you'd make us rich by manufacturing rubber out of ordinary banana skins. We bought you $75 worth of bananas, and all you proved is that banana skins are still garbage. Mrs. Weldon, the theory was absolutely sound from a scientific standpoint. Mm -hmm. Well, Bill went without his lunches for three months to make up that 75 bucks. Mr. Weldon, you are my partner. You must listen to me. Not this time, no dice. Please, make him at least listen to me. Bill, go ahead, Professor. Thank you very much, Mrs. Weldon. I'm working on... I'm working on an embalming fluid. I'm afraid we don't need any today, Professor. Please, this is not an ordinary embalming fluid. Mm. This is something revolutionary in plastics. It's a fluid which will convert people into glass. And in any position. What? Everybody who dies can pick out in advance what kind of statue he wants to become. Mr. Walden, stop and think what this means. It will do away completely with cemeteries. Nobody will want to be buried. Uh -oh. 
You will not help? Uh-uh. It's a fascinating idea, though. Glass mummies. Living statues. Let us model you for eternity. Don't die. Join our art colony instead. You provide the clay, we do the rest. Choose your attitude for always. The thinker. The discus thrower. September morn. Every man his own headstone, uh-huh. It excites the imagination, does it not? Without doubt, it is worth an investment of $148.50. And you know, we can't handle it, Professor. You'll have to deal me out on your human glassware. I will wait. Perhaps you'll change your mind. Let's go, Margaret. Goodbye, Professor. I'll phone you when we get back from Bermuda. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot. I brought you a little present. This is something which I made out of the embalming fluid. Thanks. I'll keep it till I need it. You don't have to wait. You can use it now. I think I'll wait, Professor. I haven't decided whether I want to be the discus thrower or the thinker. No, it's not for embalming. It's only a byproduct. You put it in your face instead of shaving. What does it do? It shaves you. Wait a minute. You mean it'll take his whiskers off? Yes, instantly. Does it hurt? No, it feels good. And it smells nice, too. You mean it'll shave him without a razor? That's right. How long will it take? A minute. No water? No rubbing? An instantaneous shave? Emil, don't fool me. I've got a face. I can test it. No, Bill, don't. Now, wait a minute. I'll find out about this. Bill, listen. You're an advertising man, not a guinea pig. Let me take it. I'll be would, through in a minute. Would, would you come in, please? I want to talk to you. If you got any complaints, go and make them to the union. No, would you like to earn five dollars? Doing what? Well, come on in, I'll tell you. Weldon? Oh, I'm glad I caught you. I wanted to make sure Boss. that... What's going on here? JB, you're just in time for an experiment. Give me five dollars. You'll have to bring me up to date on this, Weldon. We're going to take this man's whiskers off by rubbing him with that cream. No razor, no lather, just the cream. Oh, that's impossible. We'll know in a minute. Hey, what about my five bucks? Here you are. Okay, now what's the gag? I just want to put some of this cream on your face. Nothing doing. Well, why, why don't you try it on him? No, please. I don't want my beard off. Listen, mister, this is a new shaving cream. It can't hurt you. Can it, professor? Certainly not. Do you want that five bucks or not? Okay. Don't get it on my eyebrows, though. No. Nope. Hey, what is this, a beauty parlor? Don't we rub it in? No. Apply gently. This may be the end of the Stone Age, boss. The Stone Age of shaving. Man has been scraping himself with the same general type of instrument since the days of the dinosaurs. Up to now, he's remained a barbarian in the bathroom. An ape with a razor. Don't feel it working. How long should we leave it on? It works right away. It's a gland extract. It destroys the hair glands immediately. Wipe it off, please. The miracle of the century. Look at that face. Look at that face. Oh, that's unbelievable. I want to see. Professor, does this stuff cost much to manufacture? Nothing. It's a byproduct of the embalming fluid. Well, then, have you got this invention sewed up? Like a drum. I'm an equal partner with the inventor. And we handle the account, of course. You bet, boss. Oh. Well, when can I see? I want to see. Bill, you are a genius. Margaret, honey baby, we finally yeah. hit it. Yeah. The rain of gold. <laughs> you plug along and plug along and all of a sudden... Yeah, you pusher! You're out in front with a derby in your paw! Get me Winterbottom shaving products. I want to speak to Mr. Winterbottom personally and rush it. Hey, I want to buy some of that stuff. You hear that, Margaret? That's the voice of the public. Mr. Winterbottom, please. Hey, listen, J.B., don't talk about this on the phone. <gasps> of course not. You're right. We'll call on him. Come on, Margaret, you stay here. Take care of the professor. Guard him with your life. All right. Bill, what about our tickets to Bermuda? Forget about him. We're going on our own private yacht with a gold smokestack. Where the devil is my hat? You've got it on. Have I? Of course. These stupid tapple hats are a menace. You never know you're wearing one. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! The experiments you've witnessed just now may be called the death of the razor. The end of the stone age of shaving. It's my unequivocal opinion that this little jar I hold in my hand is the greatest boon to mankind since the discovery of radium. And I'm talking from my heart. I don't think I... mere words can convey the importance of this moment, Mr. Winterbottom. Right. 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 I am, as you all know, a man of hair trigger action. Mr. Weldon, have you signed those contracts? Yes, sir. Here they are. Fine. All right. Mr. Brady, yes, sir. notify our razor plant to shut down at once. At once, Mr. Mr. Starrett. Yes, sir. 
close down our shaving cream factory and make arrangements to dispose of all our stock on hand. Right, sir. Give it away if you have to. Yes, sir. Mr. Beitler, yes, sir. I want you to arrange for a one-hour radio program nightly beginning at once. Okay, Chief. Mr. Cookshank? Yes, sir. I am prepared to put five millions into the largest, most intensive advertising campaign ever launched in this station. I'll have all the decks cleared for you, sir, by tomorrow morning. Too late. I'm in action, I tell you. I want a press conference in the ballroom tonight. And I want the biggest celebrities in the world present, unshaven. Oh, dear. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Get Governor Fox on the phone. Okay, sir. Governor Fox? He's starting a new election campaign tomorrow. He'll be glad to act as guest of honor. It's six o'clock, Mr. Cruikshank. I want the ballroom filled with the most famous men and women available by 8.30. Order dinners for 750 guests. And get me a name band and a newsreel. Mr. Jackson. Yes, sir. Get Mrs. Winterbottom on the telephone and tell her to be at the ballroom by 8 o'clock. Right. Mr. Weldon, have you thought of a name for this product? Yes, sir. It's got to be something simple yet different. How about Miracle Face? No good. What's your suggestion, Mr. Weldon? Off again. Off again, cream. It's perfect. Take them off again with off again. That's a knockout. Gentlemen, by tomorrow this time I want to have every man, woman and child in America off again conscious. Some service, APW. Look. Every unshaven celebrity in town is here tonight, including one of Hollywood's most famous motion picture stars, unshaven. When are we going to try this stuff, Peter? I, uh, I don't like to appear in public unshaven. Well, we're all in the same boat, Governor Fox. Ceremony will take place in a few moments, Governor. And Mr. Winterbottom, don't forget my family of acrobats. I have them here, two generations, all with the same tufts of hair on the left cheek, a sort of a mole condition, I think. Excellent work, Crookshank. Say, that's great. That's an angle we overlooked. Mole beautifier. Very kind of you to favor us, Mr. Uh, uh... Parks, Larry Parks. As a matter of fact, my beard's pretty heavy. Shaving's quite a problem. I'm looking forward to your invention. Your troubles in that respect, sir, are over. Very kind of you, Commissioner, to request your policeman not to shave. No trouble at all, Mr. Winterbottom. The men are anxious to try the cream. I assure you they'll not be disappointed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there will be no speeches tonight, but I'd like to take a moment to introduce two of our most distinguished guests. His Excellency, the governor of this state. And from Hollywood, that famous motion picture star, Mr. Larry Park. Mr. Winterbottom has assembled this throng of dignitaries and celebrities for one purpose only. He desires to perform a miracle in the open, a scientific miracle under the eyes of a score of cameras, a miracle which will change the face of the world. Spotlight, please. All right, gentlemen. We will apply the cream. have been provided, you'll find them at your places. The cameras are turning, ready to record the first miracle of off again. All right, gentlemen, remove the cream. is the real hero of this occasion, Professor Emil Glinka, the new Edison. Are you asleep? No. 
I can't sleep either. Something I said, honey? Oh, no, darling. I just don't think you're right, that's all. About what? About not having a personal maid. But, Bill, with a cook and two housemaids, a chauffeur, a laundress, and a butler, we'll just be bumping into servants. There'll always be a crowd around. Well, it puts me in an awful jam. In what way, dear? Well, how can I have a valet if you don't have a personal maid? It'll look too selfish, or even worse, like I'm a softy. All right, honey. I'll have one. Thanks, darling. You're very sweet. That's all right. Now, go to sleep. I hope we don't change, Bill. Oh. Well, we've been so happy as poor little poor people, and now... How much did you say our share would be? Roughly 15 million a year for the rest of our lives. We'd better take another sleeping pill. Because I couldn't stand it if you changed. And I can't... I can't imagine a millionaire whinnying on the telephone like a horse. Well, this one will. Stop worrying. Honey, do we really need three automobiles and a special room for my furs? That's silly. All right, but you can't leave sables and minks lying around the hall like those ice skates. No, I suppose not. I'm not going to be any use to you at all. I can see that. Please, Margaret, you're just trying to pick a fight. No, I'm not. But you needed me when, when we were poor little nobodies. I meant something to you, and I helped, too, even if you did holler. But now, now we're going to be lost in a forest of butlers. Oh, Bill, I'm scared. Oh, don't talk crazy. Mrs. Winterbottom told me that, that they were happier when they had one room and a Murphy bed. Now they have separate bedrooms. Awful. Now go to sleep. I can't. I just love this room. And now we're going to have 20 bedrooms that... I won't even be able to find you. That's no fun. Darling. <laughs> we'll only have one bedroom. You promise? I promise. All right. Then I'll know you haven't changed. It's Hortense, Mrs. Winterbottom. Good morning, Mrs. Winterbottom. Shall I draw the curtains? Yes, please, Hortense. Oh, I think I'll have breakfast on a tray. Yes, Mrs. Winterbottom. Now, where's my little Toto? Toto, come right here and say good morning to Mama. Don't, don't come right away. Stop barking at Mama. You hurt Mama very much. Don't, don't. Oh, he's sick. I'll have to have him wormed again. If you don't mind, Hortense, I'd like my coffee and toast. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. Good morning, madam. Did you ring? Yes, Harold. Have you the paper and the morning mail? Yes, madam. Thank you. Oh, Harold, this is for Mr. Winterbottom. You mustn't get us mixed up. <laughs> no, madam. Oh, before I forget it, I want you to have him wormed. Who, madam? Toto, of course. Uh, yes, madam. Anything else, madam? Yeah, tell my poor little Toto. I want to see him right away. Yes, madam. Get out and stay out. One moment. Who are you? Never mind who I am. I'm going to have... What are you doing in my wife's bed? Uh, Peter! Is it you? Yes, it's me. Uh, Mr. Winterbottom, excuse me. I thought you'd... Shut up and get out. Yes. Take that horrid thing off. It's not at all funny. Look who's talking. What has happened? What's happened is I've grown a beard. I've grown a beard overnight and so have you. You've gone mad. Don't sit there like a, an, an, an ostrich. Here, look. Overnight. Uh. Oh! That confounded off again cream backfired. It turned you into a monkey. Overnight. When I woke up this morning, I thought I was having a nightmare. 
No, 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 just take it easy, Harry. Give me a scissors. No, 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 you, you, you'll cut yourself. I've sent for a barber. Oh. Don't do that. Listen, it doesn't make any difference to me. I love you as I always did, Harry. Uh, listen, darling, I've got a lot of ground to cover today, and I... Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, there are some gentlemen downstairs to see you, from your office, sir. How do they look? Rather strange, sir. I'll be right down. Oh. <laughs> now, don't have hysterics. <laughs> Keep a stiff upper lip. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, morning Mr. Uh, a little early for you, gentlemen, isn't it? Have you all had uh, <coughs> breakfast? Personally, I'm not hungry. I'm afraid, P.W., we're in a little hot water today. Where's that jackass Crookshank? He's on his way over, Chief. Oh. We've got to act, and act quickly, gentlemen. I want the press contacted at once. Tell them frankly, we want no publicity. We've, uh, we've withdrawn the product. I've already had them on the phone, P.W., and I'm afraid they won't cooperate. They're giving us a double-page spread with photographs. What? And they're calling it Grandpa Cream. That's got to be stopped. Get, get our legal department on the phone. Immediately, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. What seems to be the trouble? I got an SOS that... Oh, P.W., I know you. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> a little early for a masquerade, isn't it? Never mind the bluffing, Crookshank. Where's your beard? My beard? I didn't bring one. I didn't know you were having a party. Had I known, I could have had one to hear. Shut Wait, up, you baby face swindler, and listen to me. I've spent 30 years building up the name of Winterbottom, and you've torn it down in a single night. How? How? Look. Ah! Get Weldon. Get the professor. I'm going to put you in jail, all of you. I'm going to run you out of the advertising business. Red 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 to see you, sir. Winterbottom, where are you? Winterbottom, I'm going to give you exactly five minutes to explain this. Five minutes. But, Governor, we're having a board of directors meeting. Five minutes, I said. Good heavens, man. We're all in the same boat. Look at me. I cut these off at 5 o'clock this morning, and they've grown back since 5 a.m., and they're still growing. P.W., I am governor of this state, and I want action on these whiskers. Mr. Laddie Parks, listen, you double-crossing crook. Get this stuff off of my face within 24 hours, or I'll take that cream of yours and give you a bath in it. Please, Mr. Parks, our medical department expects to find an antidote at any moment. They'd better. Some kids saw me on the way over here, and you know what they're calling me already? The broom! Peter, the house is overrun with monsters! Oh, which one of you's Peter? What is this, sir? What's going on here? What is this, an invasion? Send for the police! Yes, the police are here! Listen, with the bottom, you feet! Now there's no occasion to lose our heads like children! No harm's been done! No harm's been done? Look what you've done to the police force! You... You irresponsible scoundrel! Well, this is all right. Well, I don't think that's so bad. Gentlemen, no gentlemen. I'm going to do everything in my power to remedy this most unfortunate situation. And to avenge it. I promise you this man Crookshank will be in jail by tonight. Tonight, you rascal. Yes, and that accomplice of yours too. That fellow Weldon. <laughs> Weldon Stables, Busher speaking. This is no time for jokes, Weldon. That's not funny. Oh, wait a minute. Sense. Don't get sore. You ought to be able to tell I'm not a horse. Yeah, this is Bill Weldon. Who are you? Oh, hello, Mr. Winterbottom. Well, what have you got to be sore about? It was a terrific success. Listen, I'm full of sleeping pills. I don't get you. Okay, I'll be right over. But that's a fine way for a fellow to talk after I made you my partner. I could have got myself another partner. Hello? Hello? Oh. What's the matter, darling? I can't figure it out. He must have gone crazy. Who? Winterbottom. Why, what do you say? Something about arresting somebody. Who? Sounded like me. Now, I better work these sleeping pills out of my system. I think something fishy's going on. Uh-huh. Crookshank. I don't trust that egghead. He said something about the professor, too. The idea of talking that way about a genius. 
Bill, he isn't a genius. What the devil I got on me? Hey, who did this? Oh, now, that's kind of childish, don't you think, dear? It won't come off. Ow! Hey, what did you use, glue? Bill, I didn't put it on you. Well, who did then? Blinker. Blinker? The cream. I gotta see, Glink. I gotta think. Yeah, we we both gotta think. How long will it take, Doctor? A few hours, no more. At present, your pituitary glands are busy growing hair. They were overstimulated by the salve. I'm injecting thyroid chlorodide. It'll quiet the pituitary glands. It, it won't grow anything else? No, not that I can foresee. It may make you a little dizzy, a little sick at your stomach. But by this afternoon, you'll be able to shave and stay shaved. Well, Governor, you're next. You'll be rid of that crop in time for dinner. I'm giving you till five o'clock to clear this matter up, P.W. That's all. <laughs> The legal department desires your signature, P.W. What are these? Releases. One hundred and thirty of them. Five hundred dollars each for both and all medical expenses. It'll total a hundred thousand and all, but I think we're getting off cheap, P.W., everything considered. This whole thing's very depressing. That's two hundred thousand, Crookshank, that's coming out of that hide of yours. Oh, now... Shut up! Unless you have a confession to make. Any news of Weldon? Not yet, sir, but the police are hot on his trail. Mm. Governor, Weldon's the real culprit. This man Crookshank's just a tool in his hand. Weldon's our man, and when we find him, I'm going to use every resource of the Winterbottom Enterprises to have him jailed for life. Excuse me. There's a Mrs. Weldon who insists on seeing you, Mr. Winterbottom. I don't want her. I want her husband. Let her come in, P.W. You may get his whereabouts out of her. Yes. Bring the woman in. I'll sweat her myself. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I want to ask you a few questions. Yes. First, where's your husband hiding? Oh, he's not hiding. He's celebrating. Celebrating? What the devil are you babbling about? He's ruined my business. He's made an ass of me in the press. He's disfigured my wife. And now you tell me he's celebrating. Well, I think you'll overlook all that in a moment. Madam, you're presumptuous. Well, I wanted Bill to tell you all this himself, but I don't think I'd better wait any longer. Mr. Winterbottom, I have a new and better name for off again. Off again. Off again. Don't talk about that stuff, madam. Kindly wait outside. No. You're a very thick-headed man, Mr. Winterbottom, and so were all the rest of you for not seeing what a great product you've got. Don't you realize what it's done? It's grown hair, and has grown it almost instantly. Oh, yeah. You just put it on the wrong place, gentlemen. Put it on your head, and it'll grow hair where it belongs. The greatest hair restorer known to man. There's millions in it, and all you have to do is change the name to On Again. Great God. On Again. Yes, On Again, not Off Again, On Again. Makes every man an Adonis. No more baldness. No more thinning hair. No more... Well, here, Bill had some left. I'll show you. Let me try some, Margaret. Let me try it. Let me try it. There. Go easy there, Krukshank. I want some. You know, I spent a fortune on hair restorer. <laughs> it's a gold mine, P.W. Uh, may I? Oh, well, you certainly don't need any. You could use a smidge, though. <laughs> yes. On again is bigger than off again. We can sell it for ten dollars a jar. A small jar. I was about to say that. Well, now you've got something, P.W. And we didn't see it. The Empire State Building right under our very noses, and we didn't see it. It was too big to see. Gentlemen, I am, as you all know, a man of hair trigger action. Mr. Starrett. Yes, sir. Notify the press of our change of plans. Right, sir. Mr. Miller, I want 500 bald-headed men in this office inside of one hour. Right, sir. This is going to be a blitz campaign. We don't need any outsiders for this experiment. Governor Fox and Mr. Cruikshank and this gentleman will do. Madam, no woman in history has done a finer bit of thinking. I want to thank you. You saved the Winterbottom Enterprises. You brought joy into the world. Joy and beauty. Oh, she has, huh? Bill, oh, Bill. Winterbottom, you're a fat-headed, chicken-livered excuse for a human being. Bill, it's all fixed up. Sending a regiment of cops after me in the middle of my work. Bill, you don't understand. Everything's wonderful. Oh, it is, huh? Uh -huh. Young man, your wife has solved our problem. I'm not interested in her solution, whatever it is. I was working on the problem with Professor Glinka when your Gestapo descended on me. I was able to shave and stay shaved. No thanks to you, we'll have off again licked inside of a week, won't we, Professor? I would like to make a statement. Later, <laughs> Professor. There isn't any off again, it's on again. Bill, it grows hair. I know it does, but we're going to cure that. We don't want it cured. We want it to grow hair. That's crazy. Who wants to buy a beard grower? Not beards, Bill. Hair on your head. Who the devil wants hair? I do. And there are millions like me. It'll make millions of dollars. You're out of your mind. It doesn't compare with off again. It's just a sop for a handful of eggheads. Listen, Winterbottom, this thing of hers means nickels. 
pennies. Young man, we're not interested in your ideas. Instead of standing here bellowing like an ape, you ought to go down on your knees to your wife for what she's done. How about some lunch, gentlemen? We'll have it in the commissary. We can discuss our plans there. Do you care to join us, Mrs. Weldon? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll join you later with my husband. Your husband, madam, had better go home and learn how to knit or crochet anything that'll keep him out of mischief. You can release these men, officers. I won't press charges. Thanks to your wife, Weldon, and nobody else. Come on, boys. You're making a big mistake, Weldon, not getting on the bandwagon. Things look pretty black until Margaret here rode to our rescue. Oh, please leave us alone, J.B. Don't worry, Crookshank. She can handle him with one arm tied behind her back. <laughs> Mr. Weldon. Professor, would... would you step outside a moment, please? I'd like to speak to my husband alone. Go ahead, Emil. Wait for me outside. I am worried about the new use of my byproduct, Mr. Weldon. I think we should tell the gentleman that it's basically an embalming fluid which I have dreamed of all my life. Its true function, once I have perfected it, is to preserve people after death by converting the human flesh into eternal glass. But in its present state, it seems the byproduct is really unpredictable. It may do one thing, it may do another. It's only going to do one thing, Professor, when we're through with it. It's going to remove hair from the human face, not grow it. I'll see you in a few minutes. This time, my dear, you're not getting away with it. Don't call me my dear, oh, Bill. Listen, you... Miss Fixit, from all I've heard, I gather it's the Marines again. Well, you're taking that great, big, wonderful brain of yours home, my dear, and keeping it there. Of all the idiotic Budinsky tricks you've ever pulled on me, this one's the worst. This one's unforgivable, do you hear? I say it's unforgivable. All right. You made a monkey out of me in front of those dimwits. I can understand about that. You can't help it. It's second nature with you. But you've done something a little bigger this time. You spiked the biggest project that ever hit this country with your daffy idea. And they bought it. They're going to grab a handful of dimes instead of letting me go ahead and perfect something that may be worth millions. And you're proud of yourself, too. You're a very ungrateful and silly man, Bill Graham. Prancing in like a prima donna and pulling the rug from under me. I put up with it ever since we were married. Well, I'm through putting up with it, understand? From now on, you're staying home washing dishes with a muzzle on. You're talking like a spoiled child. Spoiled, am I? A wrecking crew, that's what you are. That's what you've always been. They arrested you. You'd have been in jail by I'd this rather time. be in jail than with a butterfingered octopus tripping me up every move I make. Now you listen to me, Bill Weldon. You're burning up because you made a fool of yourself and went off half-cocked like some idiotic kindergarten wizard. That's all that's the matter with you. You're too small to take advice or help or criticism. You're an ego without any guts. And, and, and you're going to face it here and now and stop yammering like some... like some... So long, Wonder Woman. Where are you going? Professor Glick and I are going back to our kindergarten. Bill! Uh-uh. I've had enough. You can wrap up this marriage and send it to the cleaners, madam. Did it sprout all at once or in sections? It came in, Margaret, like a mist. Then it began to bloom. Here a stalk, there a stalk. It looked pretty spotty at first, but around four o'clock it got going. Feel it, Margaret. It's just like velvet. Don't be afraid. You can't hurt it. No, just run your fingers right through it. <laughs> That's the most amazing sensation. My head feels full of seltzer water. I owe this all to you. Every hair. Oh, no, this was all Bill's idea. Oh, I happen to know better than that. <laughs> but, Margaret, what are we doing here? Why, an occasion like this, it demands soft lights and music and champagne. Oh, lots of champagne. I don't feel like going out tonight, J.B. Oh, don't you? But, oh, well, we could celebrate right here. Where's your phone? But I, I just don't feel like celebrating. <laughs> Give me room service, please. 
<laughs> I haven't felt like this, Margaret, since I was 18. Your hair has gone to your head, J.B. Oh, oh, Margaret, run your fingers through it once again, will you please? Please, please. <laughs> Margaret, I've left word for the boys to telephone me here as soon as their hair comes in. I can hardly wait to hear their reaction. Oh, stop stewing about that marriage of yours, Margaret. Here, drink up. What is marriage, anyway? A toboggan with splinters. Right. And this is the stuff that removes the splinters from the injured area. <laughs> That's the boys. I'll bet you they're so excited they can't see. You answer it. Uh, you answer it, Margaret. They'll, they'll be delighted to hello? thank you personally. Oh, hello, Mr. Winterbottom. Yes, this is Margaret Hang Weldon. Up, Margaret. He'll talk forever. What's that? The well, governor. Anybody talk as much as that man talks. Yes, sir. So little, you know. Yes, sir. Right away. After What's the address? I nearly lost the account. We'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> Who was that? Mr. Winterbottom with his trousers in flames. He wants us at the governor's house at once. What for? Can't he celebrate without us? I don't know. Something's wrong. He sounded quite hysterical. Winterbottom? Yes, the governor's calling out the militia or something. Oh, it's a parade. J.B., hmm? you're not fooling me, are you? This is real, isn't it? Da! Good. Well, come on. We'll find out what's wrong. That's you, Crookshank? Yes, sir. The new Crookshank. Hurry up. We may be too late. For what? I don't know. The governor was hysterical. Didn't make sense. Frankly, I'm prepared for the worst. I'm Mr. Winterbottom. Yes, sir. I believe you're expected, sir. Mrs. Weldon. Why, Crookshank. Yes, P.W., the new J.B. On again. I'll inform His Excellency you arrived, sir. Thank heaven he's alive. By the way, sir, two of your associates have already arrived. Will you wait here, please? Oh, who are you? I'm Beitler, P.W. I'm Starrett. Holy suffering Moses, I'm ruined. Are you in any pain, gentlemen? No, P.W., I just feel a little dazed. We didn't count on anything like this. It was a terrible shock, P.W. For a time, I thought I was going blind. I was better off with my toupee. How did it happen? Blinka. What? The professor, he warned us that the cream was unpredictable, that it might do anything. Didn't the governor say anything definite? He wasn't even coherent. He just raved, and then, and then he started crying. Shh. You may come in now. Is it doctor on again? I'm afraid so. Is he in any danger? No, not at all. Not even hurt. Just hysterical. I've given him an opiate to keep him quiet. <clears throat> I got here as quickly as I could, Governor. You're all right? He must have put it on wrong, Doctor. Properly applied, you know. It's, it's simply miraculous. Miraculous is exactly what it is. Do you want them to have a look, Governor? Turn on the light, please, nurse. In 35 years of medical practice, I've never seen anything exactly like this. It, it looks like glass. That's just what it is. Well, show him, doctor, show him. I don't know what kind of glass it is, but it's glass. Oh, it can't be. My head is normal. That's what you think. Doctor, this is some sort of preliminary stage. Tell him not to get impatient. Oh, look. What's that? It's a moth, attracted by the light. Thinks it's a lamp. Oh. Margaret, look. You can see your face. It's just like a Coney Island mirror. Yeah. Hadn't we better put him to bed? I think that's a good idea, really. I can put myself... Oh, be careful. He mustn't break it. It's seven years bad luck. I haven't tried the thiochloramide injection yet, but I'm sure it'll relieve this condition as quickly as it removed the excess hair. Willigan. Here. I want that fellow arrested, that fellow Glinka. And get other... his confederate, too. That other crank. What's his name? Weldon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll prefer charges tomorrow. Okay, Chief. Margaret. I tell you, he has a glass head. 
You don't say. A glass head. See right through him, huh? That's bad for a politician. Nobody's laughing, my dear. A glass-headed governor is a very serious matter. Of course, you could always hang him up as a chandelier. What? Have Glinka arrested? Glinka and me? Well, what's he sore at us for? It was your idea. Well, what difference does it make whose idea it was? And instead of shouting at me like a crazy man, you might thank me for warning you. Oh, come, come. You're slipping, baby. I'll just tell you what to do. You try to figure out how to catch Glinka and me. Then you'll be sitting pretty in a twinkling. You might even wind up with the governor's head for a paperweight. All right, Bill Weldon. You've shown yourself for what you are. A cheap man with a little soul. This is the end. He's very angry. And I hung up. Hey, Emil. Are you in there, Professor? It's me. Hey, we're in trouble, Emil. It's pretty bad. So? It seems that stuff of yours is screwier than ever. Governor Fox put some on his head this morning, and now he's sitting home with a glass. Hey! Look. What's that? It's a rose. Uh, no, that. Oh, that. It's a corpse. Oh, uh, just a corpse, mm -hmm. huh? Who is it? Number 742. I bought him this afternoon from a friend. You're quite a shopper. Does it seem extravagant? Well, extravagant is not exactly the word I was searching for. I was going to make him eternal, embalm him in glass. Oh, yeah. But then I discovered I was on the track of my life's dream. Okay. A fluid that will prolong life indefinitely. Okay, now we haven't got time for and that. And something either. wonderful happened. This rose was in a water tumbler on my desk. It fell out and land it in a jar of my perpetual life fluid. That's swell, Emil. Now, look, we got to take it on the land. The governor issued oh. order. Oh, that's beautiful. Just beautiful. Now, Emil... Feel it. Well, that feels fine. Will you get your hat and coat? Holy leaping catfish. It's steel. It's embalmed in its present form. It will last forever. Forever? Forever. In my search for an embalming fluid, I found a way to preserve life. What, won't it break? It's unbreakable. <laughs> See? Holy Ike. A perpetual flower. Why? Hey, wait a minute. I've got a name for it. The, the forever flower. Smell it. The perfume is as strong as before. Say, Emil, you've really salvaged something out of this whole mess after all. I thought you'd be happy. It's not as big as off again, but it's a small fortune anyway. And it can't possibly backfire on any human being. Well, they can use these flowers for every kind of decoration there is. On, on buildings, moldings, chandeliers, automobiles, women's hats. Listen, Emil, that's the cops. The governor sent them to arrest us. we got to beat it. Arrest us. What for? We're turning his head into a goldfish bowl. Come on. But I cannot leave now. I'm about to make the most important experiment of my life. If you don't want to spend the night in shade, but my, my right notes, now. my tests, my experiments. Well, we'll I'm, take what we can I'm, carry and lock up the rest. Every hand is raised against me since I was a baby in Prague in Budapest. Don't kill me. I'll kill you myself if you don't snap out of it. Come on. What's going on down there? Emil, this way! Come on, run, Emil, run! Oh, no, you don't. Hey, let go. What's Holy the idea? Just... I got him. Dan, you and I see if there's anyone in this shed. Hold on to him, officer. He was trying to kill someone. I heard him. Who are you? Mrs. Jasper. I live here. And I heard him, and I saw him not more than three minutes ago trying to kill that poor little Professor Glinka. Madam, will you please mind your own business? Shut up. Don't speak to me, you murderer. Why, I... Oh. Professor Glinka was standing right in the doorway over here. Glinka? That's the guy we're looking for. What's your name? Bill Weldon. Weldon, you're under arrest by order of the governor. Right in here, officer. Ah! He's dead, he's dead, he's all cut up. Oh, oh, oh. Just 
Watson's a stiff in there. Why, that's just a... Ow! Slap the cuffs down. Hey, wait a minute. You're making a mistake. That's not aim. Ow! There he is, Gus. You know who that is, madam? I wish I'd never come here. I'll never get over it. Can you identify the remains? Professor Glinka, it was. I'd know him anywhere. He was nice. Real nice. Get her name and address so I can take her home. Keep everybody out of this place till the coroner gets here. Stay on guard outside. Okay. Come on, please, get over there. Okay, son. All right, stand back now. Everybody stand back. On the fire department. I right, keep those people back. Well, it's a fine trick, young fellow, but it's not going to work. Huh? You set that fire to conceal the body of your victim. That's what you've done. How could I? I was standing right here. You worked it with a slow fuse, but you ain't going to get away with it. Now, come on, get moving. Come on, way here. For heaven's sake, Emil, you got me in a terrible jam. They think I murdered you. Yes, I know. I was listening. Then why did you run away? Because you said the governor would have me arrested. Well, what of it? It won't be for long. I have an aversion to being in jail. Well, who the devil hasn't? I know. But my aversion is unusually pronounced. What about the forever flower? Don't you want me to sell it for you? How can I work up a publicity campaign when I'm in jail for murder? When I'm in jail for murder. Are you all right? I'm on the verge of an inspiration, a true inspiration. Listen, I'm on trial for murder, a brutal murder. The papers will play it up big. Well, I have no defense, none at all. So they find me guilty. Then what happens? They hang you. No, that's where you come in. They hang me? No, no, that's where you show up. You couldn't come any sooner because you were working on the forever flower. I see. Now, all through the trial, I'll be talking about forever flowers. I'll have them in the papers every day. Then when you show up, you bring the finished product with you. They'll photograph it. They'll write about it. The case will be dismissed, but the forever flower will be famous. I believe you, Mr. Weldon. Now, remember, you don't show up until the day they bring in the guilty verdict. I understand. I will wait and work for the day when it will be not only forever flower, but forever man. Okay. Now make a big bunch of forever roses. We'll need them to pass around as samples when you show up. I will need money. Oh, doggone it, I'm broke. Shall I ask Mrs. Weldon for some? No, no, I don't want her to know anything about this. But where will I get money? Emil, you'll have to get a job. Say your name is George Smith. A job? Me? Sure, why not? All right, Mr. Weldon, I'll do it for you. Hey, Emil, yeah. you sure these flowers won't grow hair? I couldn't sell any hairy roses. Oh, quite sure. All right. Goodbye, then. The next time I see you, we'll both be rich and famous. Smith! 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 What? Who? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'll be with you in a minute. What are you doing down there? When that mixture has thoroughly precipitated, I shall have discovered the secret of eternal life. Stop that. You're being paid to demonstrate chem kits, not to putter around with your private nonsense. This is the last warning. I'll get busy. Witness, boys and girls, the marvels of chemistry. That's rather elementary, isn't it, Beaver Puss? Last. At last. Hey, show us how to make a bomb. An atom bomb. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, you are privileged to no merit of your own to witness the greatest discovery since the invention of the wheel. The contents of this glass will enable a man to live forever. For science. Send for an ambulance. Sir, 
sorry I couldn't get here any sooner, Bill. That's quite all right. I'm surprised you came at all. Matter of fact, I thought you'd be on your way to Reno. Bill, you're in trouble. Terrible trouble. That always did attract you. You never change, do you? Bill, let's not waste time talking like this. Tell me what happened. No. But I've got to have something to work on. Facts to build up your side of the case. I've hired a lawyer and a private detective, and all we know is what we read in the papers. Hasn't it occurred to you that I might not want your help? Oh, Bill, don't torture me. What, is it really torture to mind your own business? Mind my own... Bill, they're calling you a murderer. I know you're not. You couldn't be, but... Oh, Bill, I love you so much. I, I just can't sit by it when you're in danger. That's just it, Margaret. You've got to learn to sit by. I never did any harm. I only helped you. You see, honey, there isn't a husband alive who can stand living with a wife who's right all the time. Not, not even when she is right? No. It's bad enough if she's a backseat driver, but when she leans over and grabs the wheel right out of your hands, that's more than any man can take. Well, what if the driver's about to hit a truck? Either you take your chances of hitting the truck or you don't ride with a guy. All right, Bill. I'll ride. And from now on, you can do all the driving. I'd like to believe you, Margaret, but I don't think you can. I will, I promise. You won't lift a finger to help me? Not a finger, I swear it. Not a finger. All right, honey. And if you begin to get worried, just remember you've got a very smart husband. I know, dear. And that this is a case that's got wheels within wheels within wheels. Mm -hmm. We shall prove that William Weldon stabbed Emil Glinka to death and then cremated his body in an attempt to conceal the crime. Yes, I ordered the arrest of Weldon and Glinka because to my personal knowledge they were guilty of conspiring and nefarious and criminal practices. I believe Weldon capable of anything. I found William Weldon running from the scene of the crime. He tried to escape. I heard that Weldon man say, I'll kill you, and then run back into the tool shed. Later on, the policeman brung me into the shed, and there was poor Professor Glinker, sticking out of a barrel, dead and all cut up. It was so horrible, I could hardly look. Your witness, Mr. Brewster. Your Honor. I'd like to question this witness myself. Why, you have counsel? I plead special indulgence, Your Honor. Bill, sit down. You're not a lawyer. Since it's my life that's at stake, I don't think my request is unreasonable. Very well. Proceed. Mrs. Josper, you overheard Professor Glinka and myself talking in the tool shed. What were we talking about? I told you that already. You said you was going to kill him. No, no. I mean before that. He admitted it. Oh, good heavens. I don't recollect. Didn't you hear us mention the forever flower? The what? The forever flower. Nope. No. I never heard that. What's the purpose of this line of questioning, Mr. Weldon? When a miracle of ingenious invention is born in the mind of man, Your Honor, that miracle carries with it many rewards. Well? What was that miracle, you ask? No, I didn't. I will I... tell you, Your Honor. It was an item of perpetual beauty, a flower, one of God's own thoughts, as the poet says. And a flower not for today, not for ten days, but a blossom that would breathe its fragrance for all time, a forever flower. I was a half-owner in this unbelievably wonderful project, the forever flower. How then can the most simple-minded imbecile suspect me of murdering my chances for fame and fortune? Mr. Weldon. That's all, Mrs. Jasper. Thank you. Your Honor, this is extremely irregular. That was the most cockeyed defense I ever heard, De Weldon. That's not the jury, Bill. I don't understand. What did all that mean? No, don't worry, honey. The old bean's working all the time. Well, really, darling, your defense could be improved. Margaret, not one finger, remember? I'm sorry. Court's adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Everybody rise. See you tomorrow, honey. You got all that, fellas? Yeah. Okay, we got it. Why, he's absolutely publicity crazy. Publicity? Tell me frankly, Mr. Brewster, does this case look as bad as I think? <laughs> Worse. That's what I thought. Is your husband usually like this, Mrs. Weldon? He's really a brilliant man, Mr. Brewster. But like so many brilliant men, he, he just runs off the track. He gets hold of an idea and it, it becomes bigger than he is. I know he's working on something very brilliant right now, but... 
You see, when a man's a genius, you can't trust him. Trust him to what? Mr. Brewster. Yes? No, I mustn't. Mustn't what? Save his life. You can save his life? Mm-hmm. But he won't like it. He'll hate me. But why? You're right. I'm going to do it. For his sake. Hats. What's on the agenda, Joe? The fence witness is coming up. What's he talking about? We haven't any witnesses except me. All rise, all rise. Hear ye, hear ye. The court of... I've decided to put Mrs. Weldon on the stand. What for? Well, what does one put witnesses on the stand for? To get you acquitted. Be seated. Mrs. Weldon, take the stand. Hey, just a minute, Your Honor. I don't want this witness. That'll do, Weldon. I'm still running this court, not you. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you, God? I do. Mrs. Weldon, please tell us what you know about the events leading up to the alleged crime. <laughs> now, don't be frightened, Mrs. Weldon. I'm not. It's just that... I've hoped and prayed for so long that... that no one would ever know. Know what? Silence. Continue, please. Your Honor... Bill, my Bill, is the sweetest man in the whole world. He's a husband out of a storybook. He's loyal and generous and considerate. It's just that... It's just that... He's not quite right. That's enough. Your Honor, I don't want this witness. Restrain that man. Another interruption and you'll find yourself in a straitjacket. Oh, don't say that, Your Honor. Don't say that. He's not that bad. Just a moment. Are you implying that your husband is not guilty by reason of insanity? Well, Your Honor, it's not for me to judge, but I do think that the court and the jury should learn the truth. Have you any evidence to indicate that your husband is insane? Must I answer that? Yes. Well, Your Honor... A great deal of the time, he... he thinks he's a horse. He whinnies. He doesn't say anything, he just whinnies. I object, Your Honor. This line of defense was not indicated. Objection overruled. Is there anyone beside yourself who can support your testimony? Yes, sir. Practically everyone we know. Every time the telephone rings, I just shudder. Bill always answers it and whinnies. You see, he thinks he's Busher, the racehorse. Proceed, please. Well, Your Honor, one of Bill's best clients is Mr. Winterbottom. That's Mr. Winterbottom sitting over there. And that's Mrs. Winterbottom sitting next to him. My Bill got hold of some trick cream and they grew a mustache on her. Your husband tried to tell the court something about some flowers yesterday. Have you ever heard him talk like that before? Oh, yes. <laughs> but never in the daytime. It usually came on late at night. Please, please calm yourself, Mrs. Weldon. Now, can you remember anything else your husband talked about in that vein? Yes, bananas. Uh, tell the court what he did. Well, he... He took some of the money we'd saved and bought bananas. Seventy-five dollars worth of bananas. Then he threw the insides away and, and he saved the skins. They were just everywhere. You may question the witness now, Mr. Weldon. About those bananas. Didn't you egg me on to buy more bananas when I began to have some slight doubts about the process? Bill, I'd love to say what you want me to, but I can't. I'm under oath. Okay. So I'm a banana fancier, and I think I'm a horse. Those are your statements under oath. Yes, dear. You used to think my conduct was amusing and whimsical. Now you say it was insane. 
Don't you think your new viewpoint may be due to the fact that I no longer love you? I think you do love me, Bill. I think in your sane moments you've always loved me. All right, Mrs. Weldon, I'll leave you with that delusion. But let's get back to the point. Now, about that whinnying. Yes, dear? You know very well that was meant as a joke. You used to think it was funny, didn't you? Well, I don't think anyone else ever thought it was funny. Everybody thought so. I appeal to your honor. Wouldn't you think it was funny if you picked up the phone and heard, Nyeh! Well done, Stables. Busher speaking. <laughs> don't you understand, your honor? That's a joke. Bill, Bill, you don't want all these nice people to think you're crazy, do you? No, I don't. But if you were crazy, you know you'd have to be acquitted, don't you? Look, I don't want to be acquitted. What's this? I don't think I need say any more, Your Honor. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't mean that. That'll do, Weldon. In view of Mrs. Weldon's revealing testimony, I'd like to see the district attorney and defense counsel in my chambers. Court's adjourned until 2 o'clock. No! Rise. You can't do this! I demand a new trial! My wife's testimony was prejudiced! And anyway, she's not gonna be my wife anymore! You've saved your husband's life, Mrs. Weldon. You're a very brilliant woman. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's you. He said it was Brewster. That's what I asked him to say. Bill, I had to save say... Save it, Commander. I've got nothing to say to you. Hey, open up here. Bill, please. You brought your Marines in for a landing just once too often, Miss Fixit. All right, hate me. I don't care what you think. You broke your word of honor. Bill, what does my word of honor matter when your life is at stake? That's what it matters, right there. A million bucks worth of publicity shot in the pants. What's that? That, my dear Miss Weisenheimer, is a forever flower. Oh, Bill, for heaven's sake, don't be silly. Silly? Why, you bubble-headed dunce. Bill! Trying to make a lunatic out of me, a certified lunatic. Bill, you didn't have a chance until I testified. So now I can go and spend half my life in the insane asylum? Well, it's better than being electrocuted. Oh, Bill, it won't be for long. I'll wait for you. We're both young. I'll come and call on you. I'll bring you soup. Shut up, will you? You and your know-it-all tricks, you've ruined me. Now, Bill! And you think you're so noble. That's the worst part of it, that phony, wifely nobility of yours. Bill, please, people outside will hear you. Let them hear. It's time somebody besides me knows what a brainless Budinsky you are and always have been. You've got to prove you're right. That's all love and marriage ever meant to you. A chance to win arguments. You're worse than a praying mantis. What's that? A bug that devours our mate while he's kissing her. That's you. Stop throwing things, you praying mantis. I don't have to put up with your tantrums here. I'm in jail, not at home. It's marble. Petrified. Glinka. Bill, Bill, Glinka's alive, isn't he? Tell me, is Glinka alive? Uh, Bill. What's going on in here? E.G. Hey, what did you do to him, lady? Nothing, he fainted. Where's Schumacher's toy mark? Fourth and Jackson. Thanks. Hey, are you sure he's all right? Yeah, he's fine. He does that all the time. And so I suggest that the question of Weldon's sanity can only be determined by competent medical authority. And I request that the court be recessed until such time as it is possible... Quiet in the court. Quiet. Your Honor, I found him. You're in contempt of court. Be quiet. Your witness will be called in due course. He's not a witness. He's the court. Samuel Glinka. Oh, yes. Silence in the courtroom. No talking. I object, Your Honor. This is a trick of some kind. We'll soon find out. Uh, what's your name? Emil Glinka. Quiet. Is there anybody in this court who can identify this man? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. That'll do, that'll do. But why didn't you come forward when the trial began? Where were you? In the hospital. Unable to move. An accident resulting from a slight miscalculation. This case is dismissed. Everybody rise. What is the truth about the truth? So this is the way you let me do the driving. I couldn't help it. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to find out something. Well, I found out all right. You're incurable. No, I'm not. I'm cured. 
Bill, I loved you so much. I just had to come running every time you got in trouble. That's what was wrong with me. I loved you too much. Well, you cured me of that, too. Hey, wait a minute, Margaret. That's not fair. What about this forever flower? Forget well, it. Can you give me any more dope on it? Sure. Here's one right here. Here it is, the forever flower. The artist's answer to the atomic bomb. Indestructible beauty. Nations will come and nations will go. But this little bloom treated with our new process will remain forever to gladden the eye with its unchanging loveliness. The forever flower. <laughs> it shouldn't do that. There must be some mistake. <laughs> well, back to work, I guess. Forever flower flops. Brilliant wife saves ad man's life. Sensation in courtroom as wife produces murdered professor. Darling, promise me you'll never again ride to the rescue. Well, Bill, what if you, you see me facing a firing squad or tied to the tracks of an oncoming train, even if I'm sitting in the electric chair, promise me you'll smile and wait for a miracle. Well, suppose you were Suppose about... nothing, no matter what. Promise me. Well, Bill, I just couldn't let you... You've but... got to let me. Oh, Margaret, promise, and I'll love you forever. All right, Bill. I promise. <laughs> Are you all right, dear? <laughs> Bill, do you still love me? I adore you. <laughs> <laughs>